Okay, I sort of hate to talk about it, but we have to talk about it. We have to talk. We have to talk about something that's very important. It has to do with your groin. Mm. <laughs> I'll tell you what it is in one second. So Maria from GoalieTrainingPro.com. I help you win more games with fewer injuries, and that's exactly what we're going to talk about here in a second. If you just strained your groin, what, sh what should you do? Because sometimes you guys do completely the wrong thing. So here's what we should do. So I know it sucks when you tear your groin and it's scary too it's worrisome so sometimes what you guys try to do is play through it to see if that makes it feel better um, it never will so if you especially if you've made a move so that's what I'm talking about I'm not talking about like oh I sort of feel my groin sometimes but then I wake up the next day and it's fine and then sometimes it comes back and sometimes it goes away that's something different that's kind of a chronic overuse thing that you should still get checked out because eventually it probably is going to blow up into a big groin tear but I mean like you made a move and you immediately felt pain uh, you you know were slow getting back to your feet you could still feel it a little, you know, when you were standing up. That's a, that's a muscle strain. And um, it can be grade one, two, or three. So one is like really you just overstretched it. It's going to maybe feel a little stiff and sore tomorrow, but probably feel better over the next two or three days. Nothing really to worry about. Grade two is you actually did tear some of the fibers. And that can be from just a few to a bunch, even when I worked at the clinic. Sometimes, and more in hamstrings, you could really feel it. You could actually feel with your fingers like a, like a divot where there was a tear in the muscle. That's a pretty serious grade two. Grade three is you've like blown the thing to bits. <coughs> a complete tear. I'm sorry, I just coughed in your microphone, but I have that cold still. So grade three is like major serious, like you are probably going to be like carried off the ice, okay? So we're mostly talking about grade two strains. So the first thing to do, stop playing if at all possible. Stop playing. Get ice on it right away. I know some people are now saying, oh, you shouldn't ice. Ice makes things worse. I think in the immediate post-injury phase, throw ice on it. Um, help control that swelling a little bit. You need some inflammation, but we don't want it to get carried away, decrease some of the bleeding in that area. So we'll go ice, ice bag on there, um, wrapped up in a cloth or something. Don't put just ice or just frozen peas right on your skin. Wrap it in a damp cloth, put that against your skin for 15 minutes. You can take it off. Um, once it's warm again to the touch, you can put it back on again. So that's how you know when it's safe to put it back on again. You could wrap it with a compression bandage um, if you wanted to, just to, again, help keep it from swelling too much. Um, but don't sleep in that, okay? So, and if you start to get numbness or tingling in your toes, take it off right away. But you could just give it a little bit of compression. There's nothing wrong with that. But then the next thing is just don't do anything that makes it angry. So don't go out, dance in the shimmy that night or whatever. Just rest it, see how it feels tomorrow. Uh, if you can get in to see your sport physio or whoever looks after your injuries, make that appointment right away. Go in and see them, get it assessed, figure out what grade it is, and they will have some other treatment ideas. <coughs> if you're full on on your own, um, then once the pain is sort of subsided, maybe a day or two, then you're going to start some gentle stretching as long as it is pain free. What I mean by pain free is, you know, you might have some discomfort just, you know, when you're up and moving around. When we do gentle stretches, we don't want to make that discomfort any bigger than, than that baseline. So, you know, you might just get into a little, just a nice, real gentle quadruped um, kneeling groin stretch position and just do a little shift side to side. Again, just to feel a gentle stretch, not to increase your pain. And then over time, you should be able to get a little wider with it. You can do a little bit of a rock back again to work that hip at different angles. And when that's feeling pretty good, you know, it's not giving you pain. It doesn't make it feel worse afterwards. It actually feels a little bit better. Then we're going to go to some more, um, putting a little more load on it, putting a little more load on it as it lengthens. Now, some of you are going to watch this video. I know you are because I've worked with you for years. You're going to watch this video and you're going to be like, aha, I strained my groin yesterday. I'm going to do all these exercises today and that's going to make it get better faster. It's not. So you, you have to go at your own pace. Um, the next exercises I'm going to show you are probably at very minimum five days post-injury. 
before you even think of starting them. So don't think that, well, the faster I can get through all these exercises, the better my groin's going to be. It, do, it don't work like that. So we've done some gentle stretching. It's feeling fine. Then we're going to move on to a little bit of isometrics. So isometrics are where we contract the muscle without changing the length in it. So I might come into my half kneeling groin stretch position, and then just in this position, push, use these muscles to push down into the floor to create tension in the adductors, in the groin muscles, and then relax. So I can really manipulate how much tension goes in. I can push with 10% of my maximum effort, 40%, 50%, 100%. So start easy, just create some tension, relax. Create some tension and relax. You might do 10 repetitions like that. We also want to come up into our tall half kneeling position. It's a little more specific for us. And then same thing. I can push down and I can relax. Push down and relax. And it, you might feel tension, but it shouldn't increase your pain again. I can do it at different angles. If I'm in closer, that's going to be easier. I won't feel maybe as strong, but it will be easier on my muscle. I can go here, push down, or I can get out here and then push down. And the further out you go, the more careful that you have to be. It's not a bad idea when we start doing these things, that start giving a little gentle stretching, a little isometric action, because also it, it pulls on the muscle. The muscle is in the process of repairing and rebuilding. So when I put some tension into it or start moving that muscle along the planes where I use it in my life and my sport, my brain says, aha, those fibers need to go like this. This is what they do. And that helps prevent. So, you know, the other side of the people are like, I show you my groin, I'm not going to do anything for six weeks and then I'm just going to go try. Well, <laughs> if that's the case, then that repair tissue, it's remodeling, but it's just like making a mess because it just wants to make it strong. If we're giving it some signals like, yeah, you, you move this way, it's like, okay, well, let's align ourselves along those lines of force. So, that's why it's important to do, but not if we're just irritating things and making it feel worse. Then the next stre stretch from here is just doing an eccentric um, action. So my foot's on a towel just so it will slide on the floor. I'm lowering myself one, two, three, four, five. Then I come forward to put my hands on the floor and bring myself up using my hands. Do not pull yourself back up just using your groins. You will probably make things much, much worse for yourself. So just nice control coming out till you feel like a medium stretch and then come in with your hands. Don't go as far as you possibly can because you actually can produce a lot of force eccentrically. And so again, you could overload yourself. Just medium and we'll just start with about five of those lowering for four to five seconds. Um, I would do both sides because both sides are getting different type of tension. So we've done some isometrics, we've done some eccentrics. This is going to be a concentric eccentric from a standing position. So this groin is going to be working as well as this groin. This groin is going to be working to stabilize. This groin is going to be the moving side. I just have a, I have a quite a light resistance band attached to my ankle. Um, and all I'm doing is keeping my knee nice and straight, bringing my heel to my toe, coming out to the side as far as I comfortably can and then bringing my toe to my heel, keeping my pelvis level, and keeping my toes pointing straight ahead. So this side is stabilizing, this side is doing the work. And I would do um, like 12 in total, so six to the front and six to the back, keeping my balance staying nice and tall. So, so far what we've done has been pretty um, specific. Like, we're going to do this repetitively. It's, it's been one movement over and over. So now we want to add a little bit of change of direction to it. So we're going to take one that we've used in our dynamic warm-ups before. We're going to go down, back with a hip shift, and then a little shuffle. Down, back, shuffle. So if we come back, down, back, shuffle. Now, you would start very easy, carefully, like you're just putting your toe in or testing hot water. So you would start just, you know, kind of feel, how does that feel? You know, okay, and then a little shuffle. Now, if you go to do this stretch and you're like, oh yeah, that hurts. 
that's the end of it. <laughs> you're not going to test it and see if it magically somehow gets, starts feeling better because you're doing more. So start easy, but then as it feels good, you, know, you can bring up the speed a little bit. Not to game speed, just to kind of nice, easy, get things moving speed. So then what, one of the things we want to do is try to get some impulse into that muscle. So, okay, we know what it's like when we're sort of doing a steady pull, but what's it like if we give it a little bit of a yank? So again, you need to wade in very carefully. One of the things we use for this is um, a medicine ball with a little kick on the wall, or sometimes we'll do it with our cable column, like so a low pulley weight stack with that ankle attachment on, where we can just pull and then have it, you know, kind of bounce and yank us back a bit. I'm going to show you the med ball one today. So I'm just going to keep my knee really, really straight. So all that movement is coming from my groin. I'm going to do out in front. And then I'm going to come in behind. So again, don't let your knee be soft. Or otherwise, you're going to actually feel it torquing your knee. So keep your knee pretty straight. And then you can come whoop, in behind. I guess my soccer career was short-lived. Keeping that knee nice and locked out. I did this terribly the first time. This is our second go. It doesn't look like I'm going to improve. This is actually the third take, if you can believe it, because I, apparently I suck so bad at going in behind. So see if you can do better than me as you go in behind. You get the idea. We just want that impulse on our adductor so that we can see, yeah, actually, that feels really, really good. I'm not saying this is everything you need to do to recover from a groin tear. It's like, hey, if you just tore your groin yesterday, you went on YouTube, I just tore my groin, what should I do? These are some of your first steps. But the most important thing to do and the best thing you can do is go see a good sport physiotherapist who can assess it. You can tell them exactly what happened. They can check and see what degree the tear is, how much strength you have lost right now. Don't worry, it'll come back. It's just because you have the pain and swelling and a torn muscle. Um, and then make a treatment plan for you. But I just for sure don't want you to just go out on the ice, test it out, see, let it go, let it linger. These are some of the things you can do that will help you recover. This is Maria from GoalieTrainingPro.com. I'm going to be working on this exercise. Oh, now I can do it, sure, <laughs> for the next little while. If you like how awful I am at doing that drill, give me a thumbs up. If you have a comment, leave it below. And if you want to get the videos before anybody else, just uh, subscribe. I'll catch you next time.